Harrison with you, and we've been talking about this amazing place called Switzerland, where, well, 97%, we think at this point, is actually recycled in Switzerland. They're probably one of the greenest places on Earth. They have the finest transportation that anyone has ever seen anywhere else. Uh, they have the really the most impeccable air service. In fact, their service is just impeccable from top to bottom. But one of the things we haven't looked at yet, after having talked about the notion they speak all these different languages, they have really different cultures all living together in harmony. Did I just say different cultures all living together in harmony? Well, it's really true. We have a German-speaking Swiss sitting next to a French-speaking Swiss. You can really switch from one, you know, hype city yeah. to another one which yeah. which has a totally different fl uh, flair which is not the French one either so I think this is something which is quite quite unique on earth yeah yeah and Aurelia you represent Zurich That's Zurich correct. Uh, is considered one of the most it's always in the top five of most livable cities on earth not in Europe not in Switzerland but on earth and why is that it's because as all over Switzerland, we just have a great quality of living in Zurich. It's a big city for us, but in fact, it's only 400,000 inhabitants. So for you guys, it might be more like a village. And you find everything in Zurich. You find the museums, great restaurants there, opera house, concert hall, many events. But then it's surrounded by beautiful nature. We have the lake there, you can do all different kinds of sports on the lake, cruises on the lake, the mountains are surrounding Zurich, so it's just a great quality of living. You know, I remember um, having talked to some World War II veterans who are old geezers, I mean these guys are in their 80 plus, one of them was gay. And get this, this is kind of a radical story here. Mm -hmm. He was telling me that during World War II, they would go to Zurich because they could actually have some kind of gay life. Hitler had, you know, wiped out everything. But Zurich was like this secret known place where people from all over the world could go and just be who they were. That's quite a historical nugget. Mm -hmm. Zurich was always a very liberal place, even though the motto in Zurich was for many hundred, hundreds of years, pray and work. Same as Geneva, we had Zwingli, you had Kolva. So, but still we were very open-minded very liberal so people from all over europe they met in zurich especially the gay community and still nowadays we do have a large gay community living in zurich a lot of events going on for the gay community there too and they just feel at ease in zurich so and uh, you have christopher street is it called christopher street west Christopher Street Day. Christopher Street Day, which is your big gay uh, parade that you have annually. And I understand you pull in roughly a million people from around Europe, including Turkey and other places, go to Zurich because it's considered the best gay parade in all of Europe. That's true, but what you're referring to actually is we have two parades, one Christopher Street Day or the Zurich Festival as we call it nowadays, and then we have the Street Parade, which is a parade with 30 trucks playing techno music and they're making a tour around the upper part of Lake Zurich and everybody's in the streets and dancing, people are dressed in fancy costumes, and in fact we have about one million visitors coming for the Street Parade. There's there's also something else interesting in your region, Lucerne, or Lucerne, depending on, uh, we sell milk here that's got a brand named Lucerne, uh -huh. so we all know the brand. Um, the Lake of Lucerne, you can actually lean over and drink out of a lake. Drink out of a lake in the middle of a city, because it's that clean. Not only in Lucerne, you can do the same thing in Geneva, in Zurich, Zurich. it's all crystal clear water. And for instance, in Zurich, we have about 18 beaches in the city itself. Can you imagine? We swim in the lake and in the river. And this is something I do on a hot, sunny day in August for my lunch break. I go and have a swim in the river. Afterwards, I go back to work. And that's so normal. All the locals, we do it. 
it's it's just a lifestyle, the kind of lifestyle okay. we have in Zurich, and it's probably the same in Geneva exactly too. Same thing in Geneva. So, Philippe, in the middle of summer when it's hot, you just take off your clothes and have a swim. Uh, and and basically, all Geneva's are nearly naked over summertime. Not just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> no, you know, don't well, kid. Uh, You're, that's a good sales pitch. It's, it might be a good sales pitch. No, you know what? Well, I think one thing which is unique again, and I'd like on, to insist on, is like you would learn at Geneva Airport to take a six-minute journey right to the railway station then it takes you another three minutes to be along the shores of Lake Geneva mm. and then the best thing to do in, uh, at summertime you would have a very serious business meeting from 10 a.m. to 12 and then you take your friends or your colleagues and either go on, on the board on the boat to wakeboard or water ski or swim like you do in Zurich yeah. in, in the lake then have lunch and then become serious again and book you know put your suit back on and, and, and you tie but that is all within walking distance and I think this is something again uh, which we particularly like just to give you an example we're talking about you know sustainable development sure. before it takes me 20 minutes to commute to the office from home and I live in Geneva countryside and I go by bike easily done right not only that but you, Philippe, live in an area where you have a very special wine that grows there. Mm -hmm. And you don't get, not a lot of it, it's just a little, but it's considered some of the most special in the world. People don't necessarily think Swiss wine, but this is top shelf stuff, isn't it? You know, uh, Switzerland has been uh, producing wines for, for, for decades. It's not usually widely exported, such as the French or you know Argentinian wines or Californian wines, yeah. to say so. But what is unique in Switzerland, and specifically in the Swiss-French region along the, the shores of Lake Geneva, you have the Lavo, which is now a UNESCO heritage region, in which they produce specific wine grapes, which you don't find anywhere elsewhere. Because the production is rather limited, and as well because, you know, we rather laid back in the Swiss and French park and region, so wine is part of the deal from lunchtime to have some white wine. And we, we have very different types of wines, such as the, the specific Merlot, Chasla, which is unique to us, uh, Gamaret, which is a, a, a red wine uh, grape, very thick and full-bodied, uh -huh. uh, and uh, which have won many prizes now and, and start to be exported and, 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 and can be found in specific restaurants. The best way to discover those wines is to go to the plenty of uh, star-rated restaurants which we have in the regions. You might have heard of uh, um, the restaurant in Lausanne, very known in Crissier, uh, other restaurants, you know, uh, and, and, and gourmet chef in, in the Geneva regions, many uh, of them have won many prices, and they do now offer those specific Swiss wines. Paris with you, we are talking with Philippe, who is from the French side of Switzerland, and Aurelia, who is from the uh, German side of Switzerland, side, as if they're sides, they all blend into one uniformly integrated, happy, collective country for sure, but they speak uniquely different languages. They actually really do. You'll be on a train, you'll cross through a town or over a small mountain range, poof, they're speaking French just like that. And the other thing is, with the Swiss, you guys all speak each other's language too. I mean, the Swiss are known to, to be, uh, whatever would be, uh, polylingual or sesquipedalian or no. something, right? <laughs> Or schizophrenic, depending the way you say it. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's all good. Yeah, and it's that, that's quite a skill because, a, as an American, as a, just a standard gringo, I speak American English. That's but what I've said that your American English is pretty good. So <laughs> thank you. I mean, you thank you. I've been working on it. <laughs> and we love to speak different languages. And this mm -hmm. way, we, this way, you also get to know, you know, other cultures much better. You really yeah. get to know the locals. So this yeah. makes all of the difference. You know, yeah, sorry. I just want to ask you about the swimming thing in the river, and, and it's a little bit of a deeper question. I know it's normal for you guys, mm -hmm. it's not maybe so normal for us. We may not have rivers that we would ever want to put our flesh into here, um, but this sort of thing about, I, I think we have a lot of modesty with our bodies here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. We might get naked in the dark, but I think you guys just... You have like nude sunbathing and all, it's just not a, such a big deal, right? 
more in the Swiss German region, I would say. You yeah. know, again, you have slight differences. Yeah. Plus, in Zurich, we have such a thing like a women-only bath, yeah. uh -huh. uh, which is on the river. It's really a very old traditional bath, which is more than 150 years old, and it's during the day open to women only. And we have a similar thing for men, the men-only bath, mm -hmm. and both of these places in the evening, they turn into nightlife place, and then it's open to the public. So you have bar there, you might have concerts, theaters, very active, very lively. And you even have sometimes shuttle boats going from one place to the other, to the other. so it's really very vibrant during the night too. Can you export that to the U.S. so we can have some of that here? We can try. <laughs> and one thing which you could do, you know, uh, there's one place which I love in Geneva called the Bain des Paquis, which sits in the middle of actually of the lake and yeah. overlooking the old town in front of you. In winter time, uh, they set up uh, a spa with a sauna. And for me, the most fascinating luxury experience which you can ever ha have, have there is I have a glass of white wine and get it to the sauna overlooking the old town with the Mont Blanc on the left hand side. And then the thing which I find absolutely, I'm trying to find the specific word, but um, very delicate is that you get out of that sauna yeah. naked, just having a towel, yes. and you jump into the frozen lake, which is at about, you know, <laughs> I think 20 <laughs> Fahrenheit, uh, Fahrenheit degrees. And that is something which is really unique. It's just a matter of, you know, of getting comfortable with your own body, but no one sees you, but you see everyone. That's beautiful. Well, give us, give us the quick upload. I'm a traveler. I want to go to Switzerland. We've determined that I can see all of Europe in one country now. We have two people here that represent the two major sides, the Swiss or the German speaking side, the French speaking mm -hmm. side. We have Geneva, world known, mm -hmm. United Nations, wine, fun frolic. It's all there. Um, we have the German side, which has the amazing snow and the skiing and all the good stuff. How do I know which one to go to, or would I want to go to both? You want to go to both. both. You want to see it all, right? Yeah. So you might start in Zurich, uh -huh. stay there for a couple of nights. And um, what I like especially about Zurich, it's Zurich is a very old traditional town. We were founded by the Romans 15 before Christ. So there is 2,000 years of history in the city. You can easily stroll all over, you know, do your shopping there. You might want to see one of the museums. There's about 50 museums in Zurich. If That's a lot if you're seeing of a city that size. We've got six here. See? Look here. <laughs> one of Switzerland's leading art museums is in Zurich, the Kunsthaus, the Museum of Fine Arts, yeah. which is really always worthwhile a visit. There is always special exhibitions to art galleries, um, great food and wine, especially the Guildhouse restaurants where you get really the authentic, the typical Zurich dishes, which is like, I don't know if you know it, Zurich schnetzeltes, sliced wheel, comes in a creamy sauce with white wine and mushrooms, and you eat it with Rösti. So things Rösti. like that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. It's like little tiny pieces of steak, right? Like steakettes, or, or is it chicken or pork? It's like hash browns. Like hash browns, yeah. but with little pieces of meat in it. And it's kind of scrambled, exactly. like an egg. Yeah, and you can have it with cheese, or with eggs, or, yeah. yeah. Oh. So it's really the traditional dish. Now, you mentioned a second ago, Aurelia, about how old Switzerland is. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we really get what old means. <laughs> like, my family came over here in uh, 1645, which is ancient wow. times. The family house is still here from 1713. Ancient times. But this is modern era compared to Switzerland. You know, if you go to Zermatt, up where the Matterhorn is, there are these, these huts that are still out there that were built in like 1100-something or earlier. And, and Zurich... When the Romans had come in, there's like a flat area in the middle of Zurich that's the oldest part, right? How old is that? It's a... Uh Zurich was founded 15 before Christ by the Romans, and you still have traces in Zurich. You can see the Roman baths actually in the city of Zurich, but you find traces of settlement of more than 7,000 years, so it's even Seven older, years. older than that years. years. So it's even older. We, you know, 700 years is double the age mm -hmm. of the U.S., so 7,000 mm -hmm. years. And so you've had 7,000 years in Switzerland to figure yes. out how to do it right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice way to say it. Yeah, true. true. 
<laughs> well, I want to I want to thank you both, and thank you guys for coming in to Marilyn Monroe's uh, former apartment. We're here in West Hollywood, California, and these two have come in from Switzerland, from the French-speaking part, the German-speaking part, and have shared with us really this amazing place that they live. And quite obviously, and quite sincerely, they really love it. And Philippe, is it true the French are good lovers? You have to try that, you know, I can't say it, I can't express it. Usually, you know, uh, love life comes after the night which we've had, so we close the doors and no one knows, but maybe I, I should switch to my French accent, you know, when the, the way I talk English, that would be maybe easier to... to well, I it, would you know. say, there's your open invitation. When in doubt, check it out <laughs> and report back. Thank you both, thank you for the... Thank you very thank much. Thank you so really much. Thank you. Really appreciate it, and we'll look forward to catching up with you a little later, okay? Exactly.